Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Howdy MJ friends, it's been a while checking back in after a wonderful weekend meeting members. Thanks for everybody that made it out. If you didn't make it out, we'll have more. That was too much fun. So checking in on the MJ space, the bears continue to have a death grip on the sector. Led to the downside by the CGC bearish reaction to earnings that has not found a bottom yet. And everybody at this point is looking at the same support level down at 25, 26. That is our monthly higher low level. If we lose that level, we are now in a monthly downtrend, or we will then be in a monthly downtrend. So we're still a good bit above that support. We're talking about 5.5%, but we're approaching it. I would love to see us drop down another red day tomorrow to test this support level as the weekly RSI is getting oversold, the daily RSI is oversold, the four-hour RSI is on the verge of oversold. The hourly RSI is on the verge of oversold. So as you know, if you've been watching this channel, I love oversold bounces. My favorite kind of oversold bounce play is a clear support level and oversold conditions on every time frame. If we get another red day tomorrow and drop down towards 26, we'll have oversold conditions on every time frame from the weekly down to the hourly and potentially down to the five minute, depending on how it shapes up. So I will be making a playoff of that support level and just looking for a decent risk to reward opportunity. Even if we just get a bounce looking for a daily lower high, let's say for ease of math, we drop down to $26 tomorrow. My risk, let's say I put a stop under $25.20 and my risk will be just about 80 cents. And the reward would be, even if I'm just looking for a daily lower high, the reward would be potentially two to three dollars. So that's the kind of risk to reward scenario I look for. And that's something I'm scouting into tomorrow on CGC. I did trade Cron today as it dropped down to lower lows. I'll go over that trade in just a second. But the daily time frame broke support of 12.11. Another leg down, the lack of support in the area. The next support level that we're looking at is really 11 psychological. The next clear support is 9.56, a ways away. So making our way back through the lack of support that was established on the crazy bull move from 10 to 25 <clears throat> and no sign of the bulls at this point. So why did I make a trade in Cron? I wasn't even watching it this morning. I was watching CGC and I said to myself, okay, if CGC breaks support of 2685, pretty much this candle, I said, if we drop down, we had hit 2685, we saw a weak bounce. I said, okay, I'm ready. If we break 2685, I will initiate, initiate scaling in. We then started to bounce and we got up to 27.16. And that said to me, all right, that's enough of a bounce that's cooling off the RSI that I'm no longer interested in that trade. I pulled up Cron and I saw that Cron on the five minute time frame had not started to bounce yet. It was still, this candle had just formed and it was still red on this current candlestick where I said, okay, Cron looks one step behind the bounce on CGC. So I'm going to bottom fish Cron and I made an entry. Normally, I would scale in because of the 5 and 15 minute RSI. I would make an entry and not put a stop loss. And I'd say, I'm going to make a second entry if we break 11.65, whatever it was. So I didn't do that this time around. And the reason I didn't do that is I said, I want to keep this a very low risk trade. I'm just getting back to trading in the swing of things after taking Thursday, Friday off. I hadn't made a video in four days. It's probably been years since I've made since I've gone four days without making a video. So I'm just getting back into the swing of things and don't want to mit risk a day loser on my first trade. Uh, and keeping it, I entered at 1177 and my po I put my stop at 1169. So I was risking at that point about just under a half a day loser. So I'm perfectly fine with that risk. And if I got stopped out, no big deal. Didn't get stopped out. Fortunately, CGC bulls, or I should say cron bulls held on better than CGC. We changed the five minute trend. I exited half of my position at 11.93 to allow myself to put my stop loss at break even, or I should say kept, keep my stop loss at 11.69. And worst case scenario, I'm in the green with a decent little win on the day. So I sold half at 11.93, 
The rest of my target was 1206 to sell because that would give me my daymaker. We missed it by a penny, and rather than sitting there and waiting for that penny to be hit, I sold at $12. And the reason for that is by looking at the 15 minute time frame, and I said to myself, okay, the odds are on this bounce attempt, trying to find where we are here, the odds are that on this bounce attempt, we are just going to set a lower high. I'm on the wrong day. There we go. So the odds are that on this bounce attempt, we're just going to set a 15 minute lower high. We've already dropped from 1230s to 1170, and we bounced back to the midway point. So rather than sit there and care about one penny, and in the end, it ended up being about five pennies, but rather than care about that, I'm just going to lock it in because I know a 15 minute lower high is coming sooner rather than later. So that ended up giving me a 90% of a day maker, which no big deal. That's the only trade I made today. I'm fine with that. And we continue to fade down to the end of the day, closing fairly weak. So on the hourly time frame, bulls are going to have to hold 1170 and break 1205 to try and shift momentum tomorrow. If we do see that happen, we zoom out to the daily and we look for anything under 1403 to be a daily lower high, keeping the bears in control. CGC on the hourly chart, just to get similar comparison. Bulls would have to hold 2646 and break 27.23 to shift momentum, in which case we zoom out on the daily and we just look for a daily lower high to form. But the bulls' backs are still against the ropes and the bears still have momentum. ACB looks like a daily bear flag. Anything under 6.74, just a lower high. We saw a higher open. We topped out and we closed weak. Support is 5.75 and 5.65. Break those levels and the bear flag will be confirmed. And the next support level from there, we're looking down at really five psychological, another name with a lack of support in this area and the monthly support approaching. APHA. So APHA, anything under 696 is just a daily lower high. It's a weak bounce attempt at this point. If we break the low of today, tomorrow, the odds that it's a bear flag will increase and we'll be looking at 583 and then a gap fill at 541. So a very clear daily lower high pattern still intact and anything under 696 is just a daily lower high. TLRY, all out dump continues. I chose not to trade TLRY on the bounce today. Reason being, I'm pretty much considering it black dirt breakdown because of the lack of price history in this range. RSI levels are a lot less helpful to us as traders. And as we know, RSI is one of my biggest tools for oversold bounces. So if it's not useful to me, I am at a big disadvantage trying to play a bounce. So we did get a solid bounce from the low, but I didn't play it. 2890 was the low, top of the bounce, just an hourly lower high at 3148. The bulls have to hold 2890 and break 3148 to change the hourly trend. And then we would zoom out and look for a daily lower high to form. So tightening hourly range into tomorrow and the bears killing it on TLRY ever since the earnings reaction. So potentially a bottom fishing play tomorrow that I might keep an eye out on because if I could make an entry and put a stop below 2890 and then see a bull break over 3148, risk to reward would be good for upside potential versus downside risk. Hexo looks like a daily bear flag possible, which would lose, that would change the daily trend. Our daily lower high is 460. And if we see that lower high and then drop down and break 415 support, that's a lower high and a lower low. And we would then zoom out to the weekly chart and the bulls would have to hold 373 and then break 495 to change the weekly trend. So one step at a time, we're watching the daily trend and the bears have to break 415 to confirm that we are now back in the daily downtrend. So it didn't take long for the bulls to give away a lot of that momentum they had and the bears trying to regain control on Hexo. Labs is the same thing, very weak bounce attempt and at risk of losing the daily uptrend. It's a lower high. And if we break 569, it's a lower high and lower low. We would zoom out and we are still looking for a weekly higher low to form because the last level is 403 and anything above that is a weekly higher low. But that would lose momentum and shift it towards the bears if 569 breaks. After that, 550 is the next support level. And the new clear resistance, anything under 630 is just a daily lower high keeping the bears in control. VFF is the same scenario. So you look at this daily chart on VFF and you say, what's most likely to happen from here? You have to know what the bigger picture is on the weekly 
and consider that we've been in a bull move for four and a half weeks and weekly consolidation is due sooner rather than later. So knowing that weekly consolidation is not far behind and knowing that it's a bearish reversal candlestick from last week, I look at this daily bounce and I say, well, that's weak and it's a potential bear flag. And if we drop down and break 1282 tomorrow, the odds that we're going to drop down and break $12 would increase, which would be a daily lower high and daily lower low, losing the uptrend, entering a daily downtrend, which means we zoom out and look for the weekly higher low to try and form. And a weekly trend change is required to be looking back at the all-time high. T-God, weak bounce attempt. I would need to see the bulls break 329 to fend off the potential of a bear flag. So there's a good number of bear flags out there. And we'll see if the bulls are able to fend those off. Burden of proof, obviously, on the bulls in this sector. And they're not doing a whole lot at this point. Support is down at 309, 301, 295. And the weekly time frame needs the trend change with the higher low and higher high. We're a long way away from that happening. Cura, bull break of the daily inside bar. Actually, I take that back. We didn't break bullish. <clears throat> Multiple daily inside bars still in play. Bulls have to break 915, 918, and 929 to try and get any shift in momentum going. But anything under 976 is just a daily lower high. We have to change this daily trend if the bulls are going to try and form a weekly trend change with the higher low and higher high, have to change the daily trend first. And we're a ways away from doing that. Even if we break the inside bars bullish, 976 is the key resistance level that the bulls are going to have to get over. C-Web. So c -Web's the one that broke the daily inside bar bullish and got no follow through. So again, bulls not proving anything. Anything under 2880 is just a lower high. Bulls would have to hold 2308 and then break the daily lower high pattern to try and establish that our weekly higher low has been set. Daily trend changes have to go to the bulls in order for weekly higher lows to be set. And that goes for C-Web, Curaleaf, and there's a couple other names looking for that on the weekly chart. Lots of weakness out there. Not many names standing out strong. IAN, daily inside bar broke bearish. We haven't dropped to the low just yet, but every single day has been a lower high four days in a row. Bulls have to break 347 to try and shift some momentum for our time frame. Don't really care about it. Daily time frame, anything under 395 is just a lower high. Bears still very strong on IAN and bulls are not proving much. Have not seen two green days in a row since we topped out at 431. Gave the entire move back very quickly. Certainly still a lot of downward pressure. M-M-E-N, MedMen. News about delivery in California, big boost today. So stood out for that regard. And to change the daily trend, we have all-time low, high of the bounce, high or low, have to break 293. If we don't break 293 and we lose the hourly uptrend, we look for a daily equilibrium and we'd look for a higher low compared to 241. It's worth watching this play. The inverse head and shoulders pattern is there where we have the left shoulder, the head. This is the right shoulder trying to form, but we have to see a bull break of 293 and 294. So bulls have to follow through tomorrow. If we don't, then daily equilibrium would be the play that we'd be watching for and the inverse head and shoulders would go out the window. TRUL, dumping. So someone made a post in the Facebook group. Why is TRUL, TRUL dumping? And a lot of people pointed to the weakness in the sector. Yes, the weakness in the sector is absolutely a reason why TRUL is dumping. But when you see a name like TRUL dumping 8% in one day below the lowest price that we've seen all summer, and you have other names like OH standing out, still significantly above its low, over 20% above its low, We've got C-Web way above its low. And you can't just lump it in and say it's a weak sector because some names in the sector are 20% higher than their low. And some names like TRUL broke their low by 8%. So what could it be? It could be unloading of the shares that became free trading recently. It could be the potential risk of the CEO's husband going on trial for whatever charges he's facing. But the bottom line is, you can't just lump them all together because some names are very clearly standing out differently than others. TRUL today is the weakest MJ name on my screen. And OH and some of these other names were much stronger. So again, it's, it's too 
simple to break it down and just say, oh, the sector's weak. That's why we're down 8% today. Something is up with TRUL that is not up with OH over the last two weeks of trading. And fundamentalists would say, well, earnings can't be the cause. And a lot of fundamental traders have gotten burned buying in since earnings. So we look at OH. OH tested the high of the move that we've seen recently of 795. We broke it by two pennies. That's not convincing. That's a double top. Daily higher low is 696. That's a must hold level. If the bulls can get over $8, we see this bounce continue and that would put us then 25% above the low. So again, a very different, very different setup, very different momentum, same sector. So something's up with names that are outliers. You know, we can say the sector as a whole is weak and everybody that's in the middle of the range is in that group, but we have weaker names and we have stronger names and there's reasons that outliers are standing out. And IAN is definitely one of the names that goes on the weaker side with TRUL. So I appreciate you tuning in. That's where we stand overall, S&P 500. Anticipating a tightening range is likely to form the rest of this week. Not expecting much action in the broader market overall. So we'll see if the MJ sector bulls can do anything on their own. Certainly the burden of proof is on their shoulders. And being very cautious, very patient, mostly cash and protective. So I appreciate you watching. Glad to be back. We'll end it here with some clips from the meetup and we'll make sure and get some more clips for the rest of the week. See you next time. Do good things. Yeah.